at the Dowan Nature Center here, Saddleback Butte uh, State Park. Uh, over the area, it's a beautiful area. Kind of a nice long view. On the left is uh, Saddleback Butte. And on the right, well, way down there is Lake Los Angeles and, uh, and the San Gabriel Mountains at the, uh, at the far end down there. It's about 2,670 feet above sea level. We're in the high desert. Um, extreme heat, sub-freezing temperatures, local wildflowers, animals have adopted and adapted and survive in this region. So this is kind of a neat place. It's been uh, made so to help the animals survive and, and exist and and because the encroaching uh, civilization on them. And there's the little uh, nature center, visitor center, and an outcropping of rocks ahead. And, uh, and uh, it says sand here in the strong winds, and we can see that just kind of below us, a little bit of a sandy area, but that's okay. That's pretty normal. And up here in the desert, we see that a lot when the wind blows, and it's strong. So, so there you go. Now here's a, coming up next is a outcropping uh, uh, of rocks here with the. So, this outcropping has been used a bunch in the movies, and. Uh, We've seen it a lot. Uh, I've, I've seen several movies with this in it, as well as the, uh, the uh, visitor center there, the nature center. And uh, I've actually uh, used this, this thing in a photo here of my own face. I try to make my face uh, part of the rock. And if you'll notice, there's this dark coating in places on the rock. And that's desert patina. It's it's uh, built up over years and years and years on the rock. And uh, if you get out there on the lava area, the Indians like they chip through it um, to make their little pictographs, which are a lot of fun. We'll take a trip out there eventually here. Creosote bush, as we have right in front of us here, is kind of widespread. It's an uh, interesting bush. It, uh, it oh, predates man for sure out here. Um, we have uh, evidence of them from years and years and years and years ago. And they, they, they kind of grow in clumps. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, one big circle of, uh, of creosote. And it just all grows as uh, Part of a part of a you know one mother plant that used to be in the center. So there you go, big changes. Yeah, put some animal prints down here in the cement. So that'd be interesting. Probably the ranger will want you to identify them if you go down here on a walk with the ranger. So anyway, it's a nice walk today. It's uh, it's so uh, mid October and. Uh, I'm just taking a, just a leisurely walk here and enjoying myself. You should too. Incidentally, uh, earlier I shot something real close to here and I'll include that at the end. Uh, it's a big photo interest. And this, looking back, you can see uh, why those rocks were, uh, were used in filming a whole lot. And, and the ranger shack up there. I've seen it in many films over the years. So it's kind of a, a very good thing to, to, to get out here and, and have some fun. Some Joshua trees, my favorite tree in the desert. You notice that they, uh, they kind of grow in a, in a circle or a group there. And uh, you'll find a lot of one-offs here and there and stuff like that. But 
You know, they, they get these plants, uh, they get the flowers on them every once in a while, but they're not, um, they're not super uh, huge, but they, uh, but they, uh, they lay some seeds and the animals eat the seeds. Most of them never get a chance to grow from a seed, but they do send out rhizomes. And that's why we see them in kind of a circle growing where one master plant has sent out its little rhizome and, and another plant comes up from it. And uh, as long as the animals don't chew the rhizome off, so the best chance is when the rhizome's coming up in a bush. So it's not easy for these animals to, or these plants, these uh, Joshua trees to exist, but they do. And I sure happy about it. Joshua trees uh, slowly uh, decompose. We owe a lot of that to uh, different things, but they also, when they die, become quite a habitat for, uh, for oh, like the yucca lizard, and I mean the yucca, the Joshua tree lizard and stuff like that. And you know, part of hoping, helping this, uh, this uh, renewal are the ants. And uh, they come and they eat seeds and they spit out the husks outside their, their house there. And then they work on the uh, Joshua trees. And as you can see, this is uh, all part of the a desert habitat and it's best not to move it just kind of leave them you know the Joshua trees were uh, well when the Mormons come out here and they saw these trees and they looked like they were reaching to the sky and they thought it was like Joshua reaching to the sky and so they named them Joshua trees uh, that's how they got their name um, they're very in, important out here they're uh, quite a uh, forest. In fact, the Joshua tree forest in landmass, definitely not density. There's another one who's another couple that have, uh, that have uh, bit the dust here. But, uh, but anyway, they're, uh, they haven't, um, they, they're actually the largest forest in the world when it comes to land mass. And even the, the old ones, once they die, they become very important part of the habitat. The interesting thing about these uh, Joshua trees is when they bloom, the branch splits and that's what causes them to branch out in the Several branches, sometimes only one grows out of the out of the bloom, but a lot of times two branches grow out of the bloom. So they're kind of interesting, as well as being a fabulous habitat. Okay, one of the inhabitants of the Mojave Desert is the Choya cactus, sometimes called the jumping Choya, because it, uh, well, yeah, it's pretty stickery, and you don't want those stickers in you. That's for sure, because uh, because they um, they're hard to get out. I have to use a pair of pliers when I take them out of me. So you don't get any in you. That's my advice. And Saddleback Butte has both a camping area, and what I'm showing you right now is the picnic area. So it's open at nine o'clock at the picnic area, the camping area. Well, you know, it's a camping area. So they have a, usually have a campground host there and uh, pretty, uh, pretty nice facilities. Uh, the visitor center at Sadillac Ute State Park is only open Saturdays and Sundays from 11 to five. As a bonus, just across the street from the Saddleback Butte State Park is an old building. And this building was built by producers, of what I'm told. Had a giant picture window looking out over the desert and a huge fireplace for entertaining. I was told it was never finished. And I'm kind of saddened when I see here because half of the arch across that big picture window is now gone. So... Uh, 
it's just, uh, it's pretty graffitied up too and a lot of trash. Now, Elephant Rock isn't too far away, and it's uh, always a pretty interesting rock to look at. And it's easy to find because it is uh, right across the street from the Kill Bill Church. Hey, thank you for watching.